Del Bascom, one of Utah's, he's one of the last of the old timers left that, that knows what's going on. And he gleaned all his information from the old timers before they passed on. And uh, Dell is going to be at our 2024 Moon Lake gathering at one of the breakout <laughs> sessions. He's going to be talking about the Lost Drones Mine, treasure symbols, the yeah. old symbols that was up. What the old timers shared with him. And being that he's an old timer now, he's going to be sharing <laughs> it with us. So this is, quite the, this is quite the opportunity to meet somebody who has done a lot of field research. He's, he's uh, written his own books, which is kind of a GPS uh, um guide to some of these lost mines in the Uinta Mountains, and, and he didn't really want the GPS coordinates in there. He's just telling me, man, that the, that the, that the publisher just kind of put them in there and changed things around on him, but... It was an idea by Lee Nelson. Why did you put... He says there are lots of treasure books. Why don't you put GPS coordinates in yours? Make it unique. It'll sell better. So I thought, he's probably got a good point. You know. So, so anyways... At our Moonlight Gathering 2024, August 23rd and 24th, mm -hmm. on the 24th Saturday, Dell will be there at the Altamont City Park. Ask him questions. And if you happen to have Dell's book, man, bring it. He'll autograph it for you. And, and Dell, are you going to have a few books there to yes. sell if people want to buy it? Yeah, I'm going to bring 10. Cool. So only 10 is <laughs> the first come, first serve. Because there's a lot of people to come. I think they said there was only... Over six or seven hundred people that showed up last year. Wow. So, so anyways, okay. So with that, Dale, man, give us a little de uh, a, a tour of what you're going to be talking about, what you're going to share. Give us a little tour of the knowledge that you've got from the old timers that you're going to be sharing with us. Thanks, Terry. I think there's a lot of ancient history as well as more modern history. I'm finding that in out. the Uinta Mountains. Uh, we're finding, uh, so this particular map, uh, you'll notice it says the very best white man map. It's backwards because it was rolled up when the Indian rode on it. Ah. So it bled through. But uh, the Indian has marked quite a few things here on this map. And this is part of my inheritance from Ed Twitchell. Ed and I were very close. Love the guy. So for those that don't know who Ed Twitchell is, kind of give us a little history on who okay. Ed Twitchell was. He lived up around Roy. He was really good friends with some of the Native American people. One of his best friends was Richard Ridley. Richard, <laughs> I mean, you're talking about a direct lineage here of some of the, the individuals who escorted Thomas and Caleb Rhodes to the gold mines. So the Indians knew where the gold was, and they shared it with the white man. And so that was the uh, go-between uh, between Brigham Young and Chief Walker. And we're talking about the Uinta Mountains, up here right by where we're going to have our Moonlight Gathering, 2024 you Moonlight betcha. Gathering. So, so, so it's the mountain range up in there. So Yeah, yeah. And Moon Lake, for example, is right in the middle of the thick of things, you know? It's right in the middle. So there's a lot of history here. For example, you'll notice down to the left-hand corner down there that it says Upper Star, Inca, Mayan, Land, Pyramids, and so on. I mean, there's a lot of history here. And the Indian marked it on this map of Hayden Peak for Ed Twitchell, and Ed eventually gave it to me. Incredible amount of information here. They even have the uh, door mine here. You remember, okay, so back in 1987 when I first met Ed, he told me, he sat me down and he started off telling me a story about a, a guy that had, the Indians had grabbed. He had, he had uh, been to one of the mines, had an iron door on it, and the Indians grabbed him and held him down and cut off three of his fingers. And uh, that's where the mine was right there. The door, uh, the door mine, Ed called it. That's the way the story begins. Uh, I understand now. In fact, I've got a friend who saw that when he was much younger. He actually saw the door. Really? And uh, he could have walked right to it, you know. If I, but the Indians recently, within the last few years, have dynamited that closed. Uh, so it's, it's all gone, covered up. You can't find it anymore. But there's a lot of information on this map. I hope to share some of this information with those that are in my group that, that come to, to visit. So, so 
I just want to say here, last year, man, you come and spoke to us and took us on a tour last year. And, man, we, we, we majorly derailed you. <laughs> I mean, you had a little, you had a, it was just going to be a little tour up to the Moon Lake Gather, up to Moon Lake. You was going to tour, tour and, and show some of the things that you'd found up there while you was tracking down the famous copper map that you ended up with that you'd be talking about, I'm sure, at your, mm -hmm. at your uh, breakout. Yes. But, but I thought, man, maybe 20, 30, 40 people would show up. <laughs> man, I seen the video after, and there was hundreds, a hundred people, and, 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 and man, I feel bad for them because there was no way they could get around to hear what you had to say. You know, yeah. so we've decided we're not going to do that this year. We're just going to have this breakout session where you can kind of tell people and, and uh, what happened went up there, and then they can kind of go up there and look around and explore themselves. You know, up there to Moon Lake. So, so I I feel bad for you and all them people that didn't get to hear you because man, we we we, we blew you up there. <laughs> You're a popular guy. You had too many come to, come to your thing. I didn't think no way that I think that many people would show up. So. Well, it's okay. <laughs> but yes, I feel bad for those that couldn't hear what I was trying to say and so on. And, and you had a, but you had a picture book um, with some of the old Spanish tree yeah. symbols that you yes. was able to, you know, because a lot of that stuff isn't there anymore. And, and right. so you documented that stuff. So you bring right. that and show that at your, at your breakout session. Sure, you cool. betcha. There's a lot of things that have changed over the years. I encourage people whenever possible, leave things just as they are. Yes. Because Mother Nature's doing a good enough job of destroying our history just like it is. And so we don't need to help Mother Nature along. We and just need to leave it where it is and how it is. Yep, I so that one. we can eventually read what's still there to be found. You know, back I've heard stories back in the 40s, 50s, 60s. There was treasure hunters that found markings. They didn't want other people to find them. Yes. Too. So they didn't want other people to find the treasure. So they blew them up. They dynamited them up. They, yes. they cut them down. They did whatever. They destroyed it so that others yes. couldn't in the future, you know, try yes. and have a That's crack true. at it. That's you know? true. But you're right. Mother Nature up there to Moon Lake, you know, we had them big flood. First, the, 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 the fire that came through them, they destroyed right. a lot of stuff. And then the big torrential rains came because the vegetation was all gone. Man, it washed a lot of stuff out bad. Right, so. right, right. That's totally true. So anyway, uh, leave things as they are if possible, you know. Now I have just uh, two or three items here that, uh, you know, a little memorabilia, if you will. For example, the silver bar was found by the bishop upon Hoyt Peak. Um, there was a massacre that the Indian, had, uh, the medicine man Indian had, had told the bishop about, and he went up there and was able to find silver bars and other things like that. Cannonball, a Spanish spur, things like that. Hold that, hold that silver bar up. Sure. Isn't that cool? That's real cool. Has a so, lot of marks in it. So, so you probably don't want to I don't know if you want to bring this to the... Can you bring this to the gathering? Show this yeah, to people? Yeah, I think I can. So if you want to see, man, a, a silver bar that come off a of Hoyt Peak, that you in the mountains, you know, come it's to the... It's authentic. Come to the Moonlight Gathering 2024, it's August. A, and, uh, it's about 87% silver. Cool. And there's some copper and some gold in it. But I've done a lot of research into the symbols and stuff, and that's one of the reasons why I enjoy this book, is because this author talks about the various symbols on the bars. Each, yeah, you know, there's so much history here. It's just, it just excites me, it gives me chills, okay? In the U.N. mountains, there yeah. is a ton of, and you was, you was touching on it, you know, from, right, from right. ancient earth than the Spaniards. Right, right. So the Spanish families were in here. I don't know if it was Garcia, Peralta, you know, Ronaldo which families they were specifically and which symbol is theirs. But I understand there is a Peralta symbol, you know, on some of the bars that people find. Uh -huh. So isn't that cool? Yeah. See, the Peralta map was dated 1721, and uh, Aaron had a copy of that. It's about five foot long. He rolled it out so that to my friend Chris could see it. It was in color. Some of the ink was in color. Wow. And in the lower left corner, it had the Peralta seal and information about it. It showed more than 100 
mines in the Uinta Mountains. Can you imagine? That the Spaniards knew about in 1721. Yeah. So the history must have gone back way before that, you know. So, and we also know that there's a connection between the Mel Fisher uh, in, uh, treasure and the Uinta Mountains. Yep. So that's 1621, 1622. So, so, so I gotta tell you. Yes. I gotta tell you. We got some of the Florida treasure hunters coming to the to the Moon Lake gathering, the Zion on the 1715 fleet, and oh, all the I'd Fisher love families. To talk the to those guys. Yeah. So they are gonna be there at the Moon Lake gathering doing a little bit of presentation. So so man, mm -hmm. if you want to know, you mm -hmm. know, about um, what's happening in Florida, Mel Fisher and that, man, grab these guys and talk to them because they're a great <laughs> bunch of guys and, and man, we're in for a treat. Oh, so. I'd love to talk to them. I, 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 I have yet to uh, have anybody from the Mel Fisher group acknowledge that this kind of stuff transpired. But I know from the Indians, when Mel Fisher, see, Mel Fisher, okay, maybe I can tell the rest of the story here, just a little bit. Okay. Uh, Mel Fisher, as you know, found gold and silver bars at the Atocha site off mm -hmm. the Florida Keys. Well, he, uh, on one of the backs, at the back of one of the gold bars, was a map. That map, along with Mel's documentation, led him to Utah. Okay, so 1996 about, he was in Utah looking for the rest of the treasure. He knew that the treasure came from Utah. So I'm gonna, I'm, that's why I'm excited that the Florida boys are coming. I'd you know, be neat. Because I don't know that they know that. Mel knew that. But I'm gonna I'm gonna dub in uh -huh. uh, into this video uh -huh. um, the meeting talking by one of the one of the council mm -hmm. members yes. saying when they met with Mel Fisher and, and when he they asked him, How do you know those there's gold on our on mm -hmm. our property? And I'm gonna dub that in because he says they slid a bar across the table to him, a gold it, bar, and exactly. it had a map on it. Mel said, because the map on this gold bar says so. Exactly. Now, the Native Americans, I have a good friend. He was at that meeting with Mel Fisher between the tribe. And they sat there around the table, and Mel Fisher passed that bar around. And uh, my friend got to see that. He said, well, I want to introduce myself to you. This, uh, my name is Mal Fisher. And uh, he had a big old gold chain on, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he says, you know, I want to talk to you about the golden rock. Well, I said, well, you know, our people around are saying you got to leave it alone. The only way you could make this happen is you, you'll have to meet with the tribal council. He said, can you set that up? So I was just thinking. And uh, I said, yeah, I'll, I'll try. I'll ask him tomorrow, then we'll let you know. So I asked him. And they said, well, we don't want to meet with him openly. Have him come in after work. That was about five. So he, he came in. And he had all his boys with him. Gold chains, everything. Yeah. You know, he introduced his, his boys to us. And so he sat down. And he, he had a bar, but it would be about like that. About the size he of your phone? Threw it, threw it to me across the table. He says, take a look at this. This come from one of your minds. I said, how do you know that? And he said, well, turn it over. I turned it over. He said, that's the map, Rock Creek. Really? Yeah, that's what he said. So did he say that was come from from uh, the Atosha or did that come from someplace else? Did he say Well, he, he's the one supposedly that found Latosha, right? Yeah. 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 And uh, so he started tell, telling us that story about the ship. Everybody loses one family member, and then uh, he says, this come from your land. He says, you have one of the biggest finds ever. That he said, one of the biggest finds ever, he says, I, the one in the river and the one in the canyon is much bigger. He said what Philip said, 25 pylons, gold stacks. Really? Yeah, that's what he said, and I, I just said, well, how do, how do you know that? He said, well, some of us <clears throat> got information from Spain, and you, you buy that information, he said, and that's what they did from the, uh, the black robes, mm -hmm. that's what he said.
That's, the jet that's where we got that information from them. And he said uh, it was incredible, you know. So he knows that the gold came from Utah. The map proved it. And this individual, this uh, Native American, his mother was born and raised in the Rock Creek area. Ah. So he knew, he was very familiar with the, the landscape yeah. and knew that's where it came from. So it's pretty exciting. But you know, Mel Fisher only was willing to give the tribe 10% of the treasure. And the tribe said, no, we were not willing to settle for that. It's small of an amount. Mel said, Michael, call the Indians. I want to set up a meeting with the chief. So we, through channels, we connect, contacted the Indians, drove 100 miles out to their the reservation there. Yeah, their big office building. And we drove out there and uh, went and, and everybody, you know, they're cowboys. They ain't Indians. Yeah. They're Levi's plaid shirts and four wheel drive trucks, gun racks. And, yep. and we went in this big giant building. The table had to be 30 foot long. Got six Indians and the chief down there, and me, Mel, and the two mountain men here. <laughs> and Mel uh, introduced himself, told them who he was, what he did, and his plan for Utah. He, he wants to come in and uh, with helicopters and radars and search and this and that. And he, uh, with with the state of Florida, he donates twenty percent of his fines here, uh, and the chief went. You get 5%. Mel went, 5%? I can't work for 5%. Meeting was over. So it didn't work out. Yep. In yep. any case, and Mel Fisher, I don't know if he ended up finding any treasures in Utah, I can't tell you, because his family won't talk to me, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Terry, what do you think? I think, man, the people that are coming to this are in for a real treat to hear your knowledge because you're loaded with a lot of knowledge because you gleaned it from from the old timers before they passed away plus your own research plus you're a, at least a second if not a third generation treasure hunter <laughs> your dad was a treasure hunter looking That's for true. up in that area and so That's you true. learned a lot from him and because of that man you had a shortcut to a lot of knowledge that most of us didn't have access yeah, to. Yeah, yeah. You know? And that's well said. And I appreciate those that have shared information with me and gone before me that know so much and knew so much. Most of them are gone. We're losing our history one way or another. And it's kind of sad. So I'm excited to share. You know, that's one of the things about my book is that I tried to give hold, uh, hold the ground. Hold that book up there. Hold that book up there. Give the ground work so that other people can continue. Uh, where I left off and continue pursuing and researching and finding the clues and finding the, if it so be, the treasure. <laughs> yep, we're, we're getting older, Dell. We don't get around as well as we used to. I know. Uh, we're still out there doing what we can, still That's, exploring, still researching. That's right. Terry, I've got a new toy I want to show you. Okay. I'll I be wanna, right back. Okay, I want to see this. Oh, man, you got your new detector. <laughs> it's, a, it's a Fisher? Yep. Fisher Gold Bug 2. The man, new, I got it. Oh, the man. The new digital version. See that? Yeah. Can you see the display? Wow, that's pretty. So I got to ask you. Yes. Why? Because there's a lot of different brands out there. Why did you decide with the Fisher? You know, I did a lot of research. I tried this and that and the other, and I felt like this was the best deal. The best price for the most bang for the buck. For what you got? You bet. You know, Fisher's a good metal detector, but... Back, this is unbelievable because Dale, I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag right now. Uh -huh. Guess who's coming to the 2024 <laughs> gathering, Moon Lake Gathering? Who, Terry? Who? Fisher Metal Detectors oh, is that'd, coming. That'd be neat. I'd love to so, meet them. So, you know, I wanted a, a detecting company there to show uh -huh. how to use these, what the advantages having them are, and, and why you want one, and how to use them. And Fisher uh -huh. Metal Detectors is coming, and they're going to bring one of their experts to show us how to use these things. So anybody that wants to know about <laughs> metal detecting, you know, well, um, I should bring um, mine. You need to come there Saturday. <laughs> Saturday, they're going to be doing some talking too. But on Saturday, they're going to be having one of the breakouts. They're going to be doing some demonstrations and talking about. It. If you got any questions at all about metal detecting, man, oh, you I'd... need to come here. This event's free, and there's uh -huh. going to be some uh, 
Uh, there's going to be a lot of breakouts going, but you want to hit the Fisher demonstration. And, and Dell, man, they, you probably yeah. already know how to use that great, but if you don't, Ooh, man. No, 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 no. I want some pointers. <laughs> you grab some pointers <laughs> from them because yeah. uh, Fisher is a great detector company. So. All right. The other thing I wanted to show you is my PPL rod. Now, you've seen this before, probably. So, so, and I'll let, I'll have it at the, at the gathering, and I'll let somebody borrow it and try it out if they're interested, see if it works for them. It doesn't work for everybody. So it, does, it didn't really work for me. Dowsing doesn't really work for me, and I'm a little bit of a skeptic, but I've seen some amazing things. But one thing I've seen you with this thing. You mm -hmm. was, was up, I don't know if you remember this. We was up Santa Quinn Canyon, mm -hmm. and uh, you was holding it straight up and down. Hold that Vertical, thing straight. you bet. Ver and that vertical thing, is an option. That thing was on its own, tipped out like that. Yes. And I thought, and you had it laying in your hands like that, and it was tipped out like that. And I thought, yeah. how the heck can that do that? That exactly. blew my mind. Exactly. Watch this. See? <laughs> can you feel you it doing something? You can feel it. Yeah. Let me do it this way. Look at that. Look at it, round and round and round over that gold. Huh. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I know you, you uh, swear by that thing. So anyway, the Brigham Young mine was over in Rock Creek, on the west side of Rock Creek. And I'll, get, and I'll not get more specific than that, but it's there. But it's on Indian property, so it wouldn't do any good anyway. But the Kershanob, which is closer to White Rocks in that area, actually had nuggets up to the size of your fist. Huh? From what so, I understand. So, man, you used to tell, talk to me about this big nuggets? Yeah, hematite. So can you imagine a size that size, uh, a piece that size of gold? <coughs> so, that so, would be incredible, wouldn't it? So did you find much, so we've been talking about this hematite here and I didn't really know what it is. This is heavy, it's got a lot of iron in it. Oh, yeah. A lot. It's I mean, that is heavy. Iron, probably, and, yeah. and I found a whole bunch of this. I mean, scattered along a, 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 what I felt was an old uh, mm -hmm. burrow trail or something yes, like that. Yes. And I'm just talking to you now, and we found you found this the same place I found mine. But <laughs> did you just so find cool. the, did you just find the one piece, or no, did you no, find no. a bunch? There was a bunch. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was, it was a just kind of scattered. And, and like I said, it yeah. it all goes to close. It peters out right where the, I figured that old mission was. Isn't that interesting? So, man, we're, we're searching the same area, me and you, Dale. <laughs> <laughs> well, from what I understand, Caleb Rhodes had gold mines all the way from Camas all the way over into Brush Creek. Cool. So that tells you that there's, yeah, there's iron here, but there's also gold somewhere not very far away. They go hand in hand. Yeah, what, what blew my mind is, is this is, it looks like it's been river rolled. It's smooth. It's, I know. Uh, you know? I know. And, and it's, it's not rough and jagged, so I, I couldn't, so at first I thought maybe this was a meteorite. I did tests on it. It wasn't a meteorite. All right. But I did an assay on it. It's loaded with iron. It's loaded it with iron. It must have weathered from the vein that it came from huh? further up the canyon is my best guess. Well, it still had the, the trail that I followed of these. It still, had to be, it still had to drop out. Somebody yeah. had to, it got scattered somehow along that trail because right. there's no vein there. Because where I'm finding it is on the, it starts on the, you know, that, that, that canyon is, is, you know, V-shaped. Right. Yeah. But then it turns and goes where it's, where it's open. There, okay. it, it can't weather down to it, hmm. you know. So that's why I thought it was, it was hauled on mules or something. And this is stuff that fell out. You know? I don't know for sure. Did we're going to you... have to get together and explore that. I'm going to have to show you some stuff in that area. <laughs> you bet. So did you find yours up where the, the canyon turned? Yes. Oh, I found mine a little further down. So farther down, if you're, if you're going up, farther down, if you go on the, up on the, as you're walking up it, if mm -hmm. you go up on the right-hand side up there, there's a, there was a place that was leveled off. And I thought, I thought, why was this leveled off? I mean, a long time ago. I mean, wow. we're talking. So I started dug, digging down, and I uh -huh. found a wall of calcite up there. Wow. And I found some old, some old claim markers uh -huh. um, by the pals in that canyon. No kidding. Yeah. Well, there's probably a connection between them and... Caleb, I'll bet you. We got to get together and share some information, Dale. That'd be wonderful. <laughs> That's a great idea. Oh, this is exciting stuff, isn't it? It is. 
All so right. many mysteries out there to be solved. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and this is a great thing about the Moon Lake Gathering because so many people come to this mm -hmm. you know that just like me and you talking I didn't know you was in that same canyon I was I didn't know you found this hematite right, you right. know you uh -huh. didn't know I was there well the same thing at the Moon Lake Gathering there's mm -hmm. going to be a lot of this is this is one of the greatest networking opportunities you'll ever have with treasure yeah. hunters, big, Bigfoot researchers, UFO um, enthusiasts, you know, because it's you all have. in that area. All that stuff happens in that area, you know. Sure it it's is. a hot spot, you know. Uh, uh -huh. the Skinwalker Ranch isn't that far away. The Moon Brian Frog Ranch isn't that far away. And anybody that spends time in the UN is, you know, the, the locals. They've got mm -hmm. Bigfoot stories. They've got UFO yes. stories. They've got treasure Spanish stories, we've ancient also, stories. We've also got the little people, too. We haven't even mentioned them. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so uh, um, like I say, come, people come from all across the country to this. I mean, yeah. I'm, I was flabbergasted how many people came last year. Yeah. You yeah. know, I was flabbergasted. Yeah. And, and, and. What better place to network with people? You know, share ideas, share That's research. Right. There's a lot of people that hooked up with people from all different parts of the country and teamed mm -hmm. up and started going after these treasure sites, yes. you know, because they all had a little piece of the pie of the same deal, and they would have never met any place else but here. So when you come That's to true. this, That's true. when you come to this, man, just don't be shy. Uh, mm -hmm. um, Talk to people, you know? Yeah. Find out their interests. And if you see a little group huddling around talking, man, go eavesdrop because there's probably some good stuff <laughs> being shared. You know, get involved one way or yeah. If you're shy to talk, just go stand by a little group and just eavesdrop and listen because there's great knowledge. There is going to be a lot of knowledge that they spend. But, uh, hey, everybody, come meet Del Baskin at the 2024 <laughs> Moon Lake Gathering. He's got a wealth of knowledge and he's willing to share a lot of it. So, with that said, Dale, man, I appreciate you. I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming out there and sharing with everybody. And that's a wrap. Thanks, Terry.